Well, hi, and welcome to my shop. We're going to be checking out this Marconi uh, AM shortwave uh, radio. And, uh, wow, we can already see that it's it's had some repairs done to it already. So most of these older radios have a, a story to tell, I'm sure. Let's just see what we've got here. Well, bag of screws and knobs. There's a magic eye. Put aside here. See the wires are cracking here, especially right up where they go into the socket. Wow. It's a 6U5 magic eye. Okay, let's uh, see what else we got here. We got a and a wire. Kind of tangled up here a bit. Horrible piece of uh, wire here. It's all insulation's all cracked everywhere. And it's you know it's just twisted on here. I'm gonna just separate that and get rid of this piece of wire which I'm pretty sure is going to lead to some kind of unfortunate thing uh, all that broken insulation that's gone okay now let's here we go Sharpen the focus here a little bit. It's good enough. So we see a couple of coils here. Oh, that guy's kind of loose. And both a little loose. This has a connection sticking out here. Hmm. That's a little odd. So this is the antenna coil here. Obviously now. There's another kind of strange thing. What's going on here? See this capacitor is cranked wide open. And this lug. Uh, some solder kind of sloppily on it but no wire connected to it and the back side has some solder where it's been soldered to the frame here which is a little unusual it doesn't have that factory look to it now the whole radio is kind of sparkly I don't know if that's coming out in the camera or not but it's all Kind of sparkly, like there's either metal dust or this is. Oh, see, I've got it on my finger now. Sparkly stuff. Don't know what that's all about. Doesn't seem to be on any other surfaces, like the glass surfaces or that. So I think it's a result of some kind of corrosion process on the. Uh, galvanizing or plating that's been put on the chassis and a few of these other parts. Let's turn it right around here. Oops. Don't want to bend these wires too much here. Okay, so it's got the CSA sticker on it. Even though at the front it says Made in America, could have been made in the United States to be, uh, oh wait a minute, this is Canadian, Canadian Marconi Company. Yet the plaque on the front here, not the plaque. 
plaque, but this plate right up here says made in USA. So could be that this was really just assembled here in Canada. I don't really know. Let's see. Oh, it's got a switch on the back. Let's see, this is the model 201A. Marconi 201A. Oh, that's Canadian. A? Eh? Still really can't see the sparkly stuff in the camera. Small transformer. One, two, three, four, five tubes. Speaker has a field coil. I expect to find a small uh, filter capacitor sticking out of here somewhere. Two IF transformers. I don't see the filter capacitor sticking up through the top. Uh, there's a phono input here. Let's tip it up and look underneath it. Here we go. What do we see? I see asbestos. I see asbestos on it right away. Frankly, I noticed earlier and then didn't do anything about it. This best is all up and down here, all around the edges here. So I'm just going to stay away from it. Here's a little piece of it. Stuck here. get out some uh, cloth and stuff like that and clean it. I don't want to do anything while we're looking at it here. Like this. So let's see. Well, obviously you see right away uh, quite a number of wax capacitors in here still. Let's see what look like replacements. One here. Yeah, this looks suspicious, this one here, too, as a replacement. There's the filter capacitor. May or may not be the original. It's big enough to be the original. That's a pretty new-looking resistor there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this has been replaced. wires twisted together here. They don't appear to be soldered, so I think this is a, uh, a gimmick of some sort, a, uh, a twisted wire capacitor. Uh, I can see a connection here that certainly isn't factory on this capacitor. So it looks like this has been replaced. It's a mica one. There's a big high wattage resistor here, part of the power supply. Uh, everything else looks pretty ordinary. Let's see if we can tune it. Seems good. See how the wire string is looped there. It's just right on the shaft. Sorry about my focus. And we have a band switch here. One position, two positions. So I'm 
going to guess this is the phono switch. There's the phono input, but the uh, radio must continue to operate. It's got to be one of these guys you when you when you plug something in here and you throw the switch, you, you deaden most of the radio output. I mean, if you have it tuned to a weak or non-existent station, you can get away with listening to your record player without hearing the uh, the radio. So this is a shrink sleeve here. So this is the replaced power cord, quite obviously. Looks in fairly good condition. I'm gonna get rid of that asbestos, though. I think that's my next task here. Okay, so I removed the asbestos. By the way, the, the way I did that was I took a damp piece of paper towel and I just dampened all the asbestos before I did anything. I wiped off what I could and scraped off the rest. And uh, that's uh, that's how I got rid of this. Okay. Let's flip this down. I certainly can give this radio a, a plug-in test without too much worry. Yeah, I think the word is it's a working radio, so I really shouldn't be too scared here. Set it up on one light bulb in series with it. That's the on-off band. That's probably AM tuning. Okay, now here's the antenna. We'll start with no antenna. First of all, volume's down. Okay, put the power to it and nothing happens because it's not switched on. You can see the line voltage indicator is right up high. But as soon as I switch the power on, this meter should drop right off. Okay, here we go. Okay, you can see the light bulb I have in series with the radio is uh, showing power. Let's see, tubes are lighting up. Of course, the dial light has come on. Let's turn it up a bit. Now it can take quite a while to warm up when I have the power restricted, so I hear a hum. Looks like that's coming over the uh, microphone pretty good. Remember, no antenna. And it should be producing sound now. That was full volume. Other band. Pretty sure we're on the short wave band. not. Full volume. Okay, let's give it full supply voltage here. Actually, I'll just go up another light bulb. Hum increased. Definitely coming from the speaker. Lots more volume. Radio is running on 100 and 105 volts now.
above that pointer. Okay, let's hook it up to an outside antenna. I think it will really come to life. Because she'd give us away. Don't come in the basement, bad people. The whole family is downstairs in the closet. And Daddy has no weapons, right, Dad? Excellent. It's another really nicely working radio. Sunny on Monday and 29 will feel like 33. Chance of showers and really thunderstorms Tuesday now. afternoon and evening. For today, the guaranteed high, 24. This extended forecast is brought to you by Train. Train, now at Home Depot. Have your new air conditioner professionally installed for only $32 a month. Terms and conditions apply. Call one. Their homes are in evacuation centers in North Battleford, Prince Albert, Saskatoon, and Regina. If you have friends and or family... A few stations up here. Wow, it takes me back. Very appropriate song for this radio. Okay, back to shortwave. We're up, up here at around uh, 18 megacycles here, megahertz. Megacycles if you want to go back in time. Full, full volume. It'd be very insensitive at the high end here. Maybe the band switch didn't. Uh... No, seems okay. Very quiet. Too quiet. Something going on there. That uh, click a click was my freezer switching on. How come we're not hearing anything? I thought we did before. This time of day, you'd expect to hear stuff up in this range. Around 9, 10 megacycles, around 11, up around 15, it's absolutely nothing. That's strange. I thought I heard something when we first turned it on. So a whole band dead, it really points to the band switch. shortwave action.
Why? Okay. Well, radio's working really well. It's got a bit of a hum to it. Uh, that's an easy thing to knock out. Oh, the magic eye. The magic eye. We haven't really looked at the magic eye. Let's take a look at it here. Looking pretty dark. Very, very faint. I can see it with my own eyeballs. Very, very faint. You can barely see it now. I can barely see it. Let's go back to uh, AM. Volume down. Let's let's put the close-up camera on that magic eye here. Oh, you can see it. Barely. Let's tune and see if it operates. Uh, from the kind of background. Uh, uh, and the day to draw the upon his brain. PrecisionLaserTR.com for more details. Aren't you glad this wasn't a TV commercial? Take an exciting drive this weekend with new Shell V Power Nitro Plus Premium Gasoline. Saving food and towel. For Covert, about an hour east of the PCA, white sands and beautiful water. Zero. Admission are free, plus your first bet is on us. Reserve grandstand tickets are over 80% sold out, so get yours at Ticketmaster.ca or visit queensfree.com. Well, it's working. It's just very weak. Generally very good. No short wave for some reason. Magic Eye needs you need another tube in there or or I think that's what you need. And uh, not bad. Get rid of the hum. I think that's what the challenge is with this radio. Not much more. Get rid of the hum, check the alignment, check the dial accuracy, stuff like that. Very good.